Good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Muhammad Salim. I'm a principal of an elementary school here in Ottawa. I have several staff members and students of Palestinian origin that have lost their relatives and loved ones in the Gaza genocide that is unfolding right in front of us. Amnesty International has found that Israel systematically uses administrative detention to persecute Palestinians. Instead of an extraordinary and selectively used preventative measure, it has become a core mechanism of the Israeli apartheid to control every aspect of Palestinian life. There have been widespread arrests of students and academics in Gaza and the West Bank, with the most recent one at An Najah National University in Nablus City, where the Israeli army raided the campus arresting 25 students who were protesting inside for union-related issues regarding student registration procedures and tuition payments. Even expressing sentiments against the occupation itself constitutes an offense. Posting something on social media in support of a Palestinian cause, offending a soldier's honor, or behaving in an insulting manner towards the Israeli army or one of its symbols is punishable by one year imprisonment. The Palestinians, an occupied people, are forced into a paradoxical and unlawful duty of allegiance to the occupation itself. How Palestinians are treated by Israeli authorities during their arrest, detention, and imprisonment is deeply disturbing and has been documented for documented for decades. One of the victims of a verified arrest made by Israeli authorities gave a testimony to Amnesty International, in which he said that he was first held and be beaten by settlers. And then after two hours, an Israeli military jeep arrived, and I quote, one of the Israeli officers who came approached me and kicked me on my left side, then jumped on my head with his two legs pushing my face further into the dirt, and then continued kicking me as I was head down into the dirt with my hands tied behind my back. He then got a knife and tore all of my clothes off except for my underwear and used part of my torn clothes to blindfold me. The beating to the rest of my body did not stop. At one point, he started jumping on my back three or four times. While yelling, yell, while yelling, die, die, you trash. In the end, before this finally stopped, another officer urinated on my face and body while also yelling at us to die. Since October 7th, the violence against Palestinians has escalated even more. According to the U Human Rights o Office, as of December 2023, six Palestinian men have died while in is Israeli custody. The violence and barbaric acts of the Israeli occupation have no age limit and do not spare anyone, even the children. Dr. Albanese, the UN, the, the UN Special Rapporteur on Human Rights in Palestinian Territory states in her June 2023 report that approx approximately five to 700 Palestinian children aged 12 to 17 have been subjected to the Israeli detention system every year for the last 20 years. About 10,000 of them have ex experienced institutionalized ill treatment during ar violent arrests, persecutions, or prosecutions, and sentencing resulting in trauma for them and their families. Nearly half of the children detained for interrogation between 2021 and 2022 were subjected to solitary confinement for an average of 12 to 13 days. The gross mistreatment of Palestinian children further subjugates the Palestinian people, systematically limiting their prospects of healthy development of future generations. But what we are seeing in Gaza, as James Elder, UNICEF spokesperson, has rightfully said, is a war on children. Since I work with children every day, 
I have focused on the impact of administrative detentions and the genocide in Gaza on Palestinian children. I see my students being exposed to the ubiquitous sounds and images of the conflict, feeling scared, outraged, and saddened. They see traces of themselves in the faces of dead, injured, and crying children of Gaza. Once during recess, I found a student, instead of playing with others, she was sitting by the stairs and quietly whispering into her hands. When I asked her what she was doing, she said, I'm praying for my fa family in Gaza. Indeed, sometimes the vision of an innocent child sees beyond what an adult can see. I don't know what is holding our government back from calling for an immediate ceasefire. Even one innocent life lost is one too many. Has our moral compass become so disoriented that we remain silent while we see so many children being murdered right before our eyes. I urge the free press to fulfill your mandate of speaking truth to power by calling out the genocide in Gaza. I urge my fellow Canadians to push our government to do the right thing by calling for an immediate ceasefire so we can end this nightmare. The UN Secretary General has rightfully said, the nightmare in Gaza is no more than a humanitarian, is more than a humanitarian crisis. The nightmare in Gaza is more than a humanitarian crisis. It is a crisis of humanity. Thank you so much for your time.